Hello and welcome to module 6 dedicated to the final volume method. Okay, so in this model we're going to demystify in particular the dictionaries, the input files, SB skins, SB solutions, and to some extent also control deeds, some actions are. So it is difficult to put all the theories, the finite volume, you not know, behind open front to put it in let's say half an hour or 40 minutes, okay? But this is just to give you a brief idea of what is happening, but very important, we're going to give you best standard practices, okay? So now you are not to be, you are not going to be any more blindfold or just putting auctions there, okay? So let's start with the final volume method. It is a fast introduction, okay? As it is implemented in OpenFund, which is in a standard uh, implementation that you will find in the literature. So the first sense that uh, we will use this equation to explain all the concepts, okay? So this is a general transport equation, okay? So as you see in this equation, we have a temporal derivative, a convective term, diffusion terms, and source terms. Each of these te terms needs to be discretized, but also from this uh, equation, we can derive the Navier-Stokes equations and all the models that we're going to use. So the practice that we're going to show you will apply, we're going to show you the practices using this equation, but also will apply to the Navier-Stokes equation or any equation that can, can be derived from this one. So important thing now, our problem statement is that we want to find the approximate solution to the general transport equation for a transported quantity fee, okay, we're transporting this, in a given domain with given boundary conditions and initial conditions. So this is a initial value, initial boundary value problem. We need to give initial conditions and boundary conditions to get it started. So this equation is a second order equation. So for good accuracy, it is necessary to use a method that is at least second order accuracy that have the same order of accuracy of the equation and this is extremely important okay and remember this from the beginning that your final solution needs to be second order accurate at least for these two terms no the the, the space <clears throat> the space derivatives the space term no then we have the time derivative that here to some extent we can get our way using of first order accuracy for both these terms including source term, we need, we need high accuracy. So here also we're going to assume that the discretization practice, it is at least second order accuracy and accurate in space and time. As a consequence of this requirement, all dependence variables are assumed to vary linearly around a point P in space and time, okay? So these are just Taylor expansion, okay? So we take Taylor expansion, there is a truncation error, and these, <coughs> these approximations here are second order accuracy, okay? So these are what, what, what we're going to call profile assumptions. So let's talk about the main discretization and the mesh information and variable arrangement in the final volume method implemented in OpenFone, okay? So domain discretization or, or mesh generation just consists in dividing the solution domain into a finite number of arbitrary control volumes, okay? Like the ones that were illustrated here, okay? They can be of any shape in OpenFone. There is no limitation. So in each volume, okay, the solution is solved, okay? The control volumes also can be of any shape. You can use tetra, hexes, prism, pyramids, whatever, okay? The only requirement is that the faces that may add the control volume need, need to be planar. You cannot use no faces with curvatures, okay? A stuff like in this continuous gallery it cannot be used here, okay? They need to be planar. Also, we know which control volumes are internal and which control volumes lies on the boundaries, okay? So we know we know the location of the faces that made up the the contour of the domain, okay, the boundaries, surface boundary. So in this control volume that illustrated in this figure, P represents the centroid, okay, the cell center, and F represents the face center. So each control volume can have multiple faces. So we know this information. Also, we know the neighbor to this, to 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 this. Uh, <coughs> 
to this control volume that shares the common face. Okay, so we also assume that the values of all variables are computed and stored in the center of the control volume VP, and that they are represented by a piecewise constant profile, the mean value. Okay, so this is the mean value. We assume that the value is constant in, in all the cell phase and can be approximated like this. So pay attention that this is approximately divided by volume. So see that if this volume becomes zero or very small, this can be a problem. So this is now as the cell center collocated arrangement, okay? And this approximation is a second order approximation. So you will see that every approximation that we are going to introduce are second order. So it's putting all together, okay? It is a lot of geometrical information that we need to, to track, or at least the solver needs to track, or if you want to implement no, a, a complete no, final volume solver, it's a lot you need to take into account. So there is a lot of overhead goes into this data bookkeeping okay so at the end of the day the final volume method simply consists in conservation of transport quantities and interpolation for information from cell centers to fail to face a center so you can compute fluxes okay later we're going to go into detail so the control volume in summary you know we know that the control volume vp has a volume v and is constructed around point p Okay, so that's why the notation we're going to use BP notation. Okay, the P probably means primary, if I were recalling some old reference. Uh, the vector from the centroid P of BP to the centroid N of the neighboring control volume VN is named D. We know this vector, and also we know the point where this vector intersects the phase. Okay, so we know the phase center, but also this point, and recall from the machine lectures that this difference here is the skewness. Also, we know the normal to the phase center, and we know also this angle, the orthogonal ang angle, okay? So all this information is known, we know as F, okay? Also, we know this vector PF and FN, okay? That all this information is going to be used later now when we're going to start to use to do interpolations. So now let us recall the Gauss or di uh, divergence theorem, which is very, very important in the finite volume method because we use it to transform volume integrals into surface integrals. So now that we have surface integrals, we can compute fluxes, okay? So basically the Gauss or divergence the theorem simply states that the outward flux flux of a vector field through a closed surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergence over the region inside the surface. Okay, so this equation. So this is fundamental in the finite volume method. And as I say, we would use it to convert volume integrals into surface integrals. We also can use it to approximate gradients. By the way, from now on, when you see in the notation ds, Okay, this is a contraction to normal, the dot product, normal and the surface of the area of the faces, okay? That will be that contraction. So we have our <coughs> transport equation, okay, in integral four. So we use the Gauss divergence steering and now we convert these volumes integrals, we convert it into surface integrals, okay? So now everything reduced to compute fluxes, okay, around the faces. We have the tiny integral, so the, we can use any tiny integration method, okay? There is no problem there. So at this point, we need to see how do we compute gradient stairs, source stairs, and convective and diffusive fluxes, okay? So, so far we're just addressing some theory and now we're going to go general theory and now we go into specific detail of each of the, of the terms that we have in the equation. Okay, and remember that in any equation that you can derive from this general transport equation, the practice that we're going to see, they are the same. So the convective term is this one. So you have it, an integral equation. Use Gauss theory, you convert it to a surface integral. This integral can be expressed as a summation, okay, in all phases. So we have the summation and then we have an integrand that we can approximate using 
Okay, the midpoint rule, for example, any ga Gauss quadrature model will, will, will work here. There are many methods, and the midpoint rule is the one used in most of the time, but you can, there are many options, okay? So, when you have this one and you approximate this integrand using the midpoint rule, that basically will tell you that the value in this phase is equal to the value in the, cell, in the phase center. So, you have this one and see that everything this <coughs> in <clears throat> this volume integral now we have reduced it to a summation of this quantity all over the faces. So they see that this is a flux. So this is when I talk about flux, we're talking about this when you are getting a flux of the transported quantity. Okay, so this is what we get. All these approximations that you see here are second order accurate at least. Okay, the big point rule is second order accurate approximation. And we proceed in the same way for the diffusive term. So you use Gauss theory, you convert it to a surface integral, and then you divide it. Now you do a discrete summation of the integ integrand on all over the faces. You use the midpoint rule and you get this. So now you have a summation okay, of the diffusive fluxes all over the faces. Important here that we have, a, this is a Laplacian and the Laplacian is equivalent to the divergence of the gradient, okay? So be careful, this is just uh, some notation, okay? So here we're just taking the divergence of the gradient, okay? And see that when we discretize a Laplacian, we have a gradient. Okay, now we move to the gradient terms. The gradient terms, there are many methods to approximate this one here, we're using the, 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 the Gauss Turing to approximate it. So basically there are many steps involved to arrive from this to this, okay? I'm not showing those steps, but again, you, you can go to the literature and you can find you know, a demonstration of this Gauss Turing, okay? But see that we can approximate the gradient in the cell center as a summation of the fluxes in all phases, okay, divided by the volume. So see that this is a problem. If your volume is, is, is zero, you are going to get infinite gradient. Okay, so that is what is important always to get good quality measures because you have very, very high ortho uh, orthogonal values. Okay, phase orthogonality. This value will get closer to zero, and your grade, and you are going to get problems problems with the gradient. So this is the the method that we're showing here is the. <clears throat> Is the, the Gauss cell base? There are many ways to approximate the gradient. So you get, you have also Gauss no base. You have also least square, fourth order, accurate method. Many of them. So this is the, the the most basic one, which is second order accurate. Probably the best method to approximate the gradients is the is the least least squares. Then you have the source term. Source term is something that you add to your equations and to approximate this one is relatively easy because it's just a quantity that you have it in the cell, okay, you, you put it in the, in the cell center. So something that you have to be careful also that this source there can be linear and non-linear. So if you have non-linear so source there's, there is some linearization involved. However, in OpenFund you need to deal with that, okay, but if you are doing your implementation, be careful that there is some linearization here, okay, and you have to be careful. Careful, okay. That is in the cases you have nonlinear terms. Your term is linear; it's just adding a quantity there, no, uh, a source or of a or a thing. Uh, so, using the previous equations to evaluate the general transparent equation over all control volumes, we obtain this semi-discrete equation. So, see that we have summation. Still, we have this time derivative, but now we have these convective and diffusive fluxes and we have the source there so now everything that you have here can be computed okay and when you run a steady simulation what you are doing is eliminating this one and you are computing this so now we need to say to see how we can approximate these values okay because we have initial conditions and also we have boundary conditions but our initial conditions and remember at the beginning we assume that everything all the values we know all the solution at the cell center but see here the f the f means that these values need to be computed at the phase center so at this point we need to somehow interpolate from cell center to phases so these are the next steps okay so First, let's talk about interpolation of the convective fluxes. Okay, so by looking at this figure, 
you, you can see that this is the phase, the pink here is the phase, and this is the cell center. We can interpolate the value from the cell center to the phase center using linear interpolation, okay? So see that you know this value, you know this value, and a simple linear interpolation. This is second order, this is accurate, this is fantastic, very easy to implement, but it has a problem that it generates oscillatory solutions, okay? So if, if you, you are working with a strong convective flows, this will generate oscillatory solutions, it will generate what we know wiggles in your solution. So this is a problem, okay? So there are ways to solve that, but this is a very valid method, you can use it, okay? So here you see that we have <clears throat> the approximation here, we can use this equation, okay? And then fx is just the weight, okay, the distance between the different uh, P and N to the phase center, okay? So this is a weighted interpolation, okay? So this is finite difference, okay? Centered finite difference we're using, okay? This is equivalent to centered finite difference. So the, the other method that we can use is that depending on the, so the important thing is that here, we, we may know this ten, distinction about the direction of the flow. It doesn't matter if the flow goes, comes from here or here, you always do it, this appro approximation here. You are not given more weight to one direction. So the next method is called upwind. In this one, you are giving weight, okay, to the direction of the flow, and then you give weight, give wave, uh, weight to one cell or the other or the other so for instance if the flow is coming in this direction we say that the solution at the phase the value at the phase is equal to the value of p okay if the flow is coming like this so you don't take any information from here okay downwind in, instead if the flow is is coming in this direction you say that the value at the phase center is equal to the values at n Okay, so you don't take any information from here. So this is how you formulate this one, okay? The value of the F is equal to P or N according to the direction of the flow. And this is now as, as winding. The only problem is that it is first order accurate. It is very stable. It will never generate uh, oscillations and actually it will never diverge. This method of winning will give you always a solution. The only problem is that it is diffusive, extremely diffusive, okay? You are, you are missing a lot of information. So this is another valid method and you can use it, okay? But you have to be very careful, okay? Because your finite solution, your final solution cannot be first order accurate. It's, you are going to under predict all your quantities, okay? So this scheme is very bounded, okay? Non-oscillatory. Non when we talk about bounded scheme means uh, non-oscillatory. So. Now that we have seen these two basic methods, okay, we can go to our search method and you can imagine that the search one will be kind of a, a hybrid between these two. So it's something that we call linear wind, okay? So basically, again, what we have here is that we know the, we take into account the direction of the flow, okay? So you want to interpolate, compute the flux of the phase, okay? but now we use a wider stencil, okay? So see that we know also P, and also you know the other cell, PP, okay? And also here, N, N, N. So using all this information, the neighbors, but also using gradient information contained here, downwind, okay? We can compute a better flux, okay? A better approximation of the value in F. So is, we can compute it, we can approximate it in this way. Okay, now this approximation is second order accurate. Okay, it's bounded, but however, in some situations we might generate oscillatory solutions, but it is bounded, it's much better than the linear when it comes to a strong convection. Okay, so this method is known as second order of wind, linear wind, or beam warming method. Okay, it's second order accurate. One thing that you might realize here to have this formulation like this, you need to have the cell centers align it, okay? They need to be collinear. If they are not collinear, this is not valid anymore, so there are ways around, okay? So here we're assuming that we have a perfect ortho orthogonal mesh, okay? So this is relative, re relatively easy to implement. When, you you, when your meshes are not orthogonal and the cell centers are not aligned, 
as in the case of most unstructured measures. There, there are different formulations, but the idea it is the same. So we mentioned that this second order of wind in some situation might generate oscillation. So to avoid the oscillation, what we can do is that we can add gradient or a slow limiter okay to that that approximation so basically this gradient is low limiters what they are doing is that see that this is the new formulation it's very similar to this one here but see that now we add this function and this function is the limiting function this function it is monitoring okay the ratio of successive gradients okay so it's monitoring in this phase the gradient so in the case in the case that you have a strong gradients or the gradients become zero or negative you know that there you have an, a strong discontinuity so it w what it's going to do is it will switch to upwind locally so just only in that phase where you have that strong gradient it will be first order accurate that we know it will always work but in the rest in the, of the domain it will be second order accurate okay so this is the concept between behind this gradient or slow limiter functions that you put here, okay? And you compute this ratio of successive gradients according to you know, the direction of the flux. And still, this formulation is just when your cell centers are, are collinear, okay? There are some differences when you they are not collinear for general and structural measures. In any case, this is what we are going to call a TVD schemes, okay? These are bounded high resolution schemes. So just to give you a brief introduction about these TVD schemes that you insert this function here and now what you need to do is just create a function here to keep now your solution bounded. So as you look at this uh, diagram and this is coming, this is called the Swaby diagram right here. You just look for this reference this paper in the internet and you're going to find the paper so basically you see here that you have two regions a gray region and a blue region and all everything not that you have in this region it is bounded okay however the only region that is high resolution second order accurate is this blue region so when you design this slow this limiter function here you need to design it in such a way that it will always be in this blue region okay so there are some requirements okay but see that you want to have those high resolution functions now here in the blue region so just to mention there are a few functions so it's clear to see that that function needs to the only way to to have it not always in the blue region is that it is a nonlinear function okay so look at that you have a min mod van Leer and super v okay these are different tvd methods okay but as you put this this function phi r okay you put it equal to one you are going to get the second order of win so see that this is a linear but see that here is becoming unbounded it's not in the blue region okay so this happens when you have very strong gradients that you have here so when these gradients goes closer to zero or negative it means that you have discontinuities so that is what happens so see that linear functions is very difficult to guarantee that you are going to be in that blue region the same way you have here when you have r equal a uh, phi r equal to r okay which is the way how you compute the gradients you get the central difference okay linear win a uh, linear win no the <coughs> this method the second order accurate method okay center different okay or linear interpolation and then you have this one which is downwind okay this is the other limit okay Z this is useless downwind okay do not use it so basically you create this region okay so if you want to see how everything is derived just go to this paper but you want to create nonlinear tvd functions limiters that stay here and it's is going to guarantee that you have a bounded solution okay so whatever you have a strong gradients it's going to switch automatically to upwind give you that solution locally and the rest of the domain is second order accurate okay so just to show you how important are these tvd methods or how important it is to use a high resolution method with gradient limiters let's take a look at this simple problem so imagine that here you have pure convection okay there is no diffusion so we know that the solution will be zero one zero so you're going to, to to have this this step here so this is our analytical solution zero one zero 
And these are strong discontinuities here, okay? So you can see this as chalk wave for the interface between water and air. So this is very difficult to solve numerically. Even in this very simple now visual example, it's very difficult to solve numerically. And all these TVD schemes are where you created just to solve this strand discontinuity. So see here that using different methods, so see, upwind method is extremely diffusive. So see that this is a lot of numerical diffusion, okay? Even it doesn't appear to be much, but it's a lot, okay? So it will always give you a solution, but the cost that, that you pay that you, you pay is that you diffuse a lot the solution. Then see here the second order method. See that the interface is very sharp. It's very accurate, but see that there are some wiggles, some oscillations there, and that is unacceptable, okay? So in this case, we get a solution, but in some other case, it might diverge immediately. Then we have the linear wing, which is second order accurate, bounded, no, inaccurate. But see that there is some, some, some diffusion here in the interface, but it's much better than this and much better than, than this because you don't have oscillations. And here in the bottom now, we have the TVD methods, okay? See that all the TVD methods are very accurate, okay? So we have the Super V, okay, which is the most accurate, I have to say, we can call it a compressive method. Then you have the min mod, which is the one I prefer to use. It is a little bit diffusive, okay, but it's still very accurate. And then you have the Van Leer, which is a smooth one, okay. And I call it compressive, let me go back. So Super V is compressive because it is in the limit, okay. It is in the, on the limit of that region that is the acceptable one okay to have a tvd method then the min mod is compressive because it is in this region and as you move here it is diffusive sorry as you move here it becomes first order accurate and the one layer it is smooth because you don't, you don't go close to those extremes okay so there are many tvd methods and probably you have used open phone and you get confused there so here we're going to give you know some guidelines or best standard practices you don't need to get lost into all those options just use just pick up one tvd and our advice is the min mod tvd so this is the idea of those tvd methods so, so here we put we see all of them in action now we we sample the solution and in the previous chapter we study sampling okay so you know how to do that, that sampling in open fund and see that up win okay so you see that we have a, a small cfl number 0 0.3 so up win see that is extremely diffusive it's something about 20 20 percent and then you have all the tvd methods and linear win methods and see that all of them okay are approximating relative well your solution okay they add a little bit diffusion but okay we we know that here we have a very uh <clears throat> strong discontinuity that is difficult to to resolve okay so you can get better approximations you get better, better measures by the way but see something that here the linear method look at that is very accurate okay actually is the, the one that they have less error with your analytical solution but there is a problem that you see this wiggle these are oscillations okay this these are the oscillations due now to the approximation okay and this it is unacceptable and let's say that in this case let's say that you are working with chemical reactions and when you reach the value one you are triggering the reaction so see here that artificially you are triggering the reactions your, so your solution is wrong so this is why we don't want to have oscillations okay because it might happen that in according to your physics you might be triggering a physics that does not correspond to what you are doing okay so usually in in, in external aerodynamics you can live with these oscillations but there are some situations that it, it is unacceptable okay so this is what happens when you use linear in this case it, it, it converges but it might happen that it will, will diverge. Now these oscillations will amplify, amplify, and eventually it will diverge. So try to avoid using linear when you have a strong convection. So instead you can use linear win or switch to the, the min mod method. So all this explanation, as I say, we gave it is assuming that these cell centers are collinear, okay? That we have a perfect orthogonal mesh, but in reality, 
industrial meshes, this this is a section rather than the rule. So we have something like this that they are not collinear. So now we need to to correct those approximations. Okay, the concepts will be the same, but there are some corrections. And this is an act an area of active research. You know, a high order scheme for unstructured meshes. So here, just to show you how things can be done, is you have unstructured meshes and stuff like this. So for instance, upwind is exactly the same way. Now central difference. You can do it like this. So see that now you introduce gradients. Okay, so you can approximate the <clears throat> the value of the phase using gradients. And now that by introducing gradient, you are removing the dependence in this cell PP. So see that in these equations, the cell PP doesn't appear anymore. Okay, and see that the second order of win now also you can approximate it like this. So you need this gradient in the cell P, but also the gradient in F and you just need the value of p, okay? So see that you are removing any other dependence. There are some, also some other uh, formulations that you can add ghost cells, okay? So you can know this distance and this deviation, okay? But they are more complicated. There are many ways to do it, okay? Just to show you that <clears throat> this is, when you have the instructor measures, you, you do these corrections, okay? So it's easy to demonstrate also that when this cell center is collinear, okay? that formulation can also can you, you <coughs> fall back to this one okay it is equivalent to this formulation so this is kind of what we have implemented you don't need to do anything in open form to choose this in this approximation just given the right name in sv scheme and that's all but you need to 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 do anything to make the distinction between collinear cells or perfect structural measures then also we know that for the TBD, we need to compute the rate of successive, successive gradient. So again, there are many ways to do that. Here, I'm just showing, showing you one way to do it. So see that you compute it like this and you are removing any dependence on neighbor cells. Okay, so now this rate of successive gradients, you can approximate it like this. So everything now depends only in the gradient in the cell P and the values at the cell centers, okay, in P and N. It will be here. You and the you know talking about upwind down downwind cell okay upwind cell downwind cell downwind cell upwind cell okay so this is one way to approximate it there are many ways and probably this is one of the best ways to do it okay so now also great what about gradients computations okay so there are many ways and this is using the the, the grounds green green gals Turing, okay, we can approximate it like this. And just to stress again, look at that this approximation you divide by the volume. So if this volume is close to zero, you're going to have problems with the gradients approximations at the cell center. Okay, you approximate at the cell center and then you can approximate, you can interpolate, then you can interpolate it at the phase, okay, using linear interpolation. So this is what we're going to, to talk now, gradient reconstruction at phase centers. You approximate it at cell centers, for instance, using this method, but you can use least square or whatever, okay? So this is the Gauss cell base that we're showing there. So now how do interpolate, how do we interpolate the, the gradient at the cell center to the phase? Well, sim very simple. You can use, for instance, this method, linear interpolation. Okay, we have seen that already. So this is valid. Then there are many, many other ways to do the, this re reconstruction. So for instance, there are some methods that you can minimize this skewness. Okay, I'm not going into details. They are pretty much equivalent. They are very similar. Okay, but they tend to be a little bit more elaborated. But this one is, is very valid. Okay, so you, the only thing that you need to know, your grade is in P and N, and then just interpolate it at the face and that's all. Okay, you reconstruct the gradient at that phase. So let's talk about now interpolation of diffusive fluxes in orthogonal and non-orthogonal mesh. So if you have an orthogonal mesh, remember that this is what, what is happening is that the vector S is parallel to D. Okay, so you can approximate, approximate the diffusive flux like this. Okay, it's cent cent central differences, okay? So for the diffusive flux, it's, it's perfectly valid to use central differences and actually, is the best way to do it. So see that if you have this, you do it like this, and if you have different the the, the 
the lens PF and NF are different, you use a weighted interpolation. But the problems arise when you have no orthogonality, when S is not parallel to D. So when you have that case, and look at that here, this angle, this different here is 20 degrees. Okay, so if you see that you get 90 degrees, you get volume zero, and then your, your gradients will, will diverge. So what you do here, okay, to approximate the degree, the, 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 <clears throat> the diffusive fluxes is that you, split that computation. So you're going to have an orthogonal contribution and no orthogonal contribution, kind of a correction. So your orthogonal contribution is this one, and then your non-orthogonal contribution is this one. So this is implicit, explicit computation, okay? So this is what you do to correct the, the non-orthogonality. So there are different methods implemented, okay? So we're going just to sh see this one, the over-relax, which is the one probably the, 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 the most accurate one, but also is the one implemented in OpenFone and most of the CFD software use this one, but have in mind that there are many methods. So basically what you do using this over relaxed uh, method to approximate diffusive fluxes is that you split it like this, okay? This quantity is computed like this, okay? So you will see that this is some vector you just dust your nose in vector calculus and just to see the, what you get here or linear algebra also. So you, if you get an orthogonal mesh, this is equal to one. And this one will go to zero, okay? So basically you compute, this one is computed, you put it here and then you have the factor K. You know A is minus one and you can compute K. Okay, so an orthogonal mesh, this will be, k will be zero and this one will be one and you will fall back you know it's equivalent to the central difference so basically this is what you do this correction okay so this is the over relaxed uh, approach and basically what you are doing as the orthogonality is higher you are going to give more importance to the orthogonal contribution so a small no orthogonality, you give more importance to this one, but also you add a small correction here, okay? And that is what is happening. So when this one becomes really large, in this case, look at that, this angle is 40 degrees. When this one starts to become larger and larger, you are giving more weight to this computation. So these are explicit. So when you assemble your, your linear system, this will go into your right-hand side. So kind of this is what you know, and this is, an implicit compu uh, computation that you need to compute it, okay, from, from the actual values. So, as you have seen that the mesh, okay, can induce an error, so basically this is what we want, okay, orthogonal and non skew mesh, okay, so when you have something like this, you are 100% sure that you are going to get a very nice solution, okay, and actually you can use linear methods and stuff like this, but when you start to have uh, mesh induced errors, you only need to add some corrections into your numerics. So you have seen that we need to add a correction for the diffuse stir, com correction for the convective stir, some correction for the gradients, not for the approximation, okay? So this actually, this will be your case, then more measures you are going to have no orthogonality with excuseness, okay? So no orthogonality, you, you have to be careful with no orthogonality. You see that it's very important. Excuseness also have an influence, okay? But it's more critical no orthogonality. But well, generally speaking, both of them, you should keep it low, the values, okay? So that's all. That, that is the disc discretization in a space. So after you have a space discretization like this, we can move in time. So when you do like this, we proceed now using now what is called the method of lines, okay? So you can use different discretization methods for different uh, terms in your equation. So here you can go, I know, second order accuracy, first order accuracy, third order accuracy, and so on, okay? So they are, they are not they are not coupled these different discretization methods. Have in mind that there are some methods, okay, like, I know, <coughs> Friedrich method, stuff like that, that all these discretizations, they are linked together, okay? So you have here second order, second order, you cannot change it. So, <coughs> So now we can move to discretize in time. If you want the time derivative, if you don't want it, you are done. You have it like this, and then you iterate. You, you use re relaxation. So you can use any discretization method. There are many of them, okay? So there are the same that you are going to use for all these and stuff like that. So you have the Krant Nicholson, Euler implicit, forward, impl forward Euler, backward difference, and Adam Bass for Adam Molson's, okay? There is a really long list of, of methods. 
Again, also here you can choose between first and second order accurate. Something very important that in space, it is very important to have second order accuracy. In time, we can get our our way around using first order accurate. So you can use first order accurate in time. However, you have to be careful that you need to keep your CFL number low to avoid adding too much numerical diffusion. But when it comes to the time discretization, it is valid to use uh, first order accuracy. However, ideally we would like to have everything second order accurate. It is up to you, okay? But here you can get your way around. So at the end of the day, after you discretize everything, you are going to assemble a linear system, okay? So you have something like this, and this is where you are we're going to crunch number. So this is the matrix of coefficients. This is your unknown, what you are looking at, the values of the cell centers, okay? And these are this is what you know, okay? These are the explicit contribution. Can be boundary condition, can be uh, grading contribution for, from previous iteration and so on. Okay, so basically you solve this linear system and that's all, okay? To solve this linear system, there are many methods available. So now we're talking about SFV solution. Previously, we were talking about SV schemes. Okay, now we move to FV solution and the different methods to crunch numbers, okay? So, so what does OpenFone do? Uh, so basically, the previous step. So, in OpenFone, okay, we need to give uh, the the mesh, and that information is connect uh, is contained in constant poly mesh. We need to give boundary initial conditions. Everything is contained in the directory zero. We need to give physical properties, okay, such as density, gravity, whatever, and everything is contained in constant. And remember that you have all those physical properties here. You have coefficients, okay? You have all those coefficients. Okay, everything <clears throat> it is in constant. And then you need to add models, okay? The physics, so stuff like turbulence modeling, mass transfer. So those are just additional equations that you are going to discretize using the practices that we just saw. Then you need to say how to solve each of these terms, how you want to approximate them, then so the diffuse is con convective gradients and so source terms. And you do that in SB schemes, okay? Then also you need to tell how to solve the linear system. You do that in SV solution. And finally, in control D, you need to give information such as time state, CFL number, save, uh, saving frequency, and so on. Okay. And additionally, uh, do not forget to, to set up your function object that probably here is wrong. Should be, let me update it here. Okay. The function objects okay or monitors they are all specified in system okay <clears throat> in, in the system control dictionary so now let's talk about the sb skin dictionary and let me give you the standard practice so you are already familiar with this once you open that dictionary for any case you are going to get have something like this so when you see ddt skins basically is this discretization okay time derivative. Gradient schemes is how you approximate the gradients at the cell centers. Divergence is this convection, how you approximate this one. Laplacian is how you approximate this one, okay? And remember that Laplacian can be expressed as, as the divergence of the gradient, okay? A combination of this. Uh, then you have this term SN grad skin that is the related to the Laplacian. Okay, so this is at the phases how you compute it. Okay, so basically what you use here, you use it here. And then you have these interpolation schemes. And this is how you interpolate physical properties of phase centers. And here, the only option, there are many methods implemented, but use linear, it is okay. So basically you are doing this. So here you, you have this a short explanation now of, of each term. Okay, so see here that you have, for instance, interpolation schemes, as you are wondering, just refers to the method used to interpolate values from cell center to phase centers, okay, to do that reconstruction. And as I say, it's unlikely that you will need to use something different from linear, okay? This is this famous weighted interpolation. Okay, 
So when it comes to time discretization, there are many methods implemented in OpenFund. You are going to find the source code here, okay? And this is likely the ones that you are going to use most of the time. You have a steady for a steady simulations and then Euler, backward, and Craig Nicholson, okay? So Euler is first order accurate, backward, second order, Craig Nicholson, second order. I like to use this one, the Craig Nicholson, okay? So most of the time I stay between Euler and Grant Nicholson, okay? So when you use the Grant Nicholson, you have the option to use a coefficient, okay? So this coefficient is you put it to zero, it is equivalent to a pure Euler, which is first order accurate, and as you put it to one, it is a pure Grant Nicholson. So this value, this coefficient is bounded between zero and one, okay? So values in between zero and one is kind of taking the, the base of both world, of first order and second order. So most of the time I run using values of 0 0.5 or 0 0.7, okay? Then when it comes to the convective terms in OpenFone, there are many, many methods available. Some probably here where it's where users get lost. So my advice here is just choose. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, you have here the source, the source calls. So call is the one to see all the methods. And the last time we checked now, there are more than 50 methods. So but what our advice here is just to pick up the most important one. So the thing that you need to have available is you need to use front end to turn up win. So half the up win. Then linear win is a very good method. 95% of the time, this is the method I use. And if you have used commercial software, you will see that this is the default method in commercial software. So also this is the one that you are going to use most of the time have ready linear method, the linear method, there are some situations that you might use this method, okay? For instance, you are doing less simulation with fine meshes, the linear, it is okay. And then also choose a good TBD method. My personal opinion, the min mod is the best one, but these two are very, very good. Van Leer and min mod, okay? And probably also you can choose the limited linear if you are doing less simulation. So you can switch between linear and limited linear. Okay, this is the only thing that you need to know when it comes to discretization of convective terms in OpenFone. Then you have a lot of stuff, don't get lost there, okay? This is more than enough, okay? So these are, these are your choices. This is what we use most of the time. Okay, when it comes to also in the convective term, I'm talking about the linear win. When you are defining this, when the linear win, you need to give gradient information. As you recall from, from the uh, previous explanation, uh, that this method, you need to take this information, the gradient. Uh, it's computing the, the rate of successive gradients. So you need to, to give this gradient information. So you define, for instance, gra U here in gra skins, and that's all, you use this method. Or if you put default here, you put default, that's all, okay? Uh, then gradients, terms, discretization. There are many methods implemented in OpenFone. Here you have the source code, but most of the time, these are the ones that you are going to use. Gauss linear, Gauss point linear, which is the no base method, and least square. But on, on, honestly speaking, I always stick with Gauss linear or least square. This is the, the most accurate one, the least square. However, in our experience, we have seen that it tends to be a little bit oscillatory, you know, when you have unstructured meshes, at least in open form. Okay, so remember that we also can, can add limiters to the gradients to avoid no diffusion, uh, to, to avoid oscillation. However, those limiters can add some diffusion due to clipping, but we're gaining stability, so it's not a bad idea. So when it comes to limiters, you have here the location of the source code, and these are the limiters that you can add for the gradient. So if you have seen previously this keyword cell limited and then like cell limited Gauss linear, this is a gradient limiter just to avoid oscillation of the gradients, okay? So it will add, they are going to add a little bit diffusion due to clipping, but they are just removing oscillation. So it's always recommended to use limiters and the recommended one is cell limited. This is the recommended one with any combination of this, okay? So here you have a little bit no description about these limiters and what they are doing. So we go from more diffusive to less diffusive, okay? So ND means uh, multi-directional, multi okay? So it's a very selective, okay? It's going to clip information only in the direction where you have that gradient. Instead, the cell limited, when you, you don't use the keyword ND, when you click, 
the information of the gradient, it will do it also in the other direction, in all phases. So it will add a little bit diffusion, okay? But honestly, my advice is uh, use this one, okay? It's, it's more stable, but it will add a little bit more diffusion. So basically, cell limiters will limit cell to cell values, and phase limiter will limit phase to cell to cell values, okay? <clears throat> so this is our list. And um, by the way, the, the default method is the min mod, but there are some other methods that you can you can use, but they stay with the min mod, which by the way is the same that you have used commercial software. It's the same method that you find in commercial software. It's the cell limit, cell limited with the least square, and the cell and you use and they use the min mod method. So how you define the, the, the gradients limiters is like this. Okay, grad the skin. Okay, cell limited, you enable that gradient limiter, Gauss linear, and then you have this blending factor or coefficient that is bounded between 0 and 1. 0 means the, the, the slow limiter is off or the gradient limiter is off. 1 means it is on and it's very aggressive. 0 0.5 is not so aggressive, so it might generate some oscillation, but it will not add so much numerical diffusion. So be careful because when you use a, a value of one, it is very aggressive, so it can add a lot of a lot of a lot of diffusion, okay, due to clipping. And there are some specific variables that that, are, that is critical because it can add some diffusion. In particular if you are doing stuff like free surfaces. It's not recommended to put this one to one because it can add too much diffusion in the interface. So user recommended values is 0 0.5, okay? And then for velocity, yes, I recommend to put it to one for velocity and the rest of the variables put it to 0 0.5, okay? So you can do it in a selective way. So here default means for all gradients, but then you can say grab P, grab U. So usually grab P is a good idea to put it 0 0.5 just to have an accurate computation of forces and also for temperature 0 0.5. So now let, let's talk about Laplacian terms discretization. Okay, there are many methods implemented in, in OpenFront and remember, the Laplacians are very sensitive to no orthogonality here where we have that correction. And Laplacian, you have it in every single equation. You have it in momentum equation, energy equation, all tolerance models, you have Laplacian. So it's very important to use to use the, the, the right method here. So for instance, these are the options that you have available in open form. Orthogonal, corrected, limited, uncorrected. Orthogonal, it does what it says in case that you have orthogonal meshes, perfect mesh. So this is the section, so do not use this one. Just go ahead and use limited. And when you use the limited, you are doing this. So remember that you have this correction. So in the limited, you add this correction, and this is the method that you should you should use, limited. And uncorrected is something like this. I don't recommend you to use it, okay? So it will be like the limited, but you are not adding the explicit contribution, okay? So how does it work here? So you define it like this, default, Gauss, linear. So this is the interpolation method now of the diffusion coefficient, okay? So again, this is... I don't see any reason why to use any method, so go ahead and use linear, but there are different methods. So if you are working with, for instance, uh, conjugate heat transfer, maybe it might be better to use another method, stuff like uh, harmonic mean, okay? But for the moment, let, let's use it, the linear, and then see that the limited, and then you have this coefficient. So if you put it to one, it's equivalent to the corrected to this, but if you put it to 0 0.5, Okay, you are adding a coefficient that is going to limit the contribution of this term. Okay, so that 0 0.5, it will be the kind of this, this coefficient. Okay, so you, it's to avoid that the explicit part becomes larger than the implicit. Okay, so better we see it here. Okay, so just to make it clear, now this blending factor is just to avoid no orthogonal contribution, okay, exceeding the, the orthogonal Part. And why we need to do that? Because remember that this non-orthogonal contribution, it is explicit part. It's something that you have in your right-hand side. So it's become larger. It will give you problems in your linear system and it might, might cause oscill oscillations. Okay, so basically you put here this one and so you put here 0 0.5. You are basically multiplying this 0 0.5. So it's not larger than, than this. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, so my advice, always go use this one and put here 0 0.5, okay? So most of the measures, so if you have measures with no orthogonality between 70 and 85, that will be most of the cases, 
put it 0 0.5 is the north is less than 70 leave it to one but it's it is okay to use it 0 0.5 okay so that is my best practice so remember that you have Laplacian schemes you choose it like this and then you have this s n grad skin so usually whatever you put here you're going to put it here so they are together okay so what method should i use so now i'm going to give my recipe so this method uh okay is the recommended one in most cases okay so see that what we have is this this discretization generally speaking second order accurate so see that for the great firstly ddt schemes and using crank nicholson with a low value so it's closer to first order accuracy then for the gradients default cell limited gauss linear 0 0.5 and then for velocity i use a very aggressive limiter and then divergence see that always the divergence of velocity it has to be at least second order accurate this is the important one so see that i'm using gauss linear at win and grad u okay use this method and then for the turbulence quantities omega and k in this case linear at win but also but for the turbulence quantities also you can use at win there is no problem okay using at win for the turbulent quantity but for the uh divergence of velocity it, yeah it has to be at least linear win at least second it has to be at least second order accurate this is the range of stresses okay gauss linear is okay and see that laplacian skins gauss linear limited 0 0.5 okay so this is the recommended for most of the cases probably here but might be better to put zero okay so let me add the note here you can put it zero and this is a common okay let me add the common the color there okay boom 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 okay so recall that if you put crack nicholson to zero is equivalent to euler and then if you increase that value you are getting more accuracy okay so just you have to that that note there so then if you want something more accurate you can use this okay so this extra accuracy this is something that you want is you are doing less simulation so in less simulation usually you have very fine measures of very good quality also you are using low cfl number so you can go with full full second order accuracy backward gauss list square and here you can use linear okay with no problem or limited linear okay but be careful that this is this this is very very oscillatory okay and you need to have very good measures and also small small time steps and then this is the one that i use to troubleshoot okay for instance you run a simulation and that simulation is crashing you use this method okay so this is super stable but it's too diffusive okay so this one you see that everything is first order accurate so this should give you always a solution so if your simulation is crashing you switch to this method and if that simulation is still crashing your problem is somewhere else it's not the numerics you should check like boundary conditions physical properties because this is a very very robust numerics that should always give you a solution okay so this one is only used for troubleshooting purposes or also you can use it to get an initial condition so you run the simulation using this you run it like for a hundred times that you get a good solution initial conditions and then you can switch to this method okay so this is my recommended method this is your best standard practice which by the way this is the default setting that also that you will find in most commercial softwares you are using star ccn or fluent or cfx is you open the software and you look at the at, at the methods that they propose as default you will see that this is what you are proposed they are, they are proposing so this is it this is the crash intro the crash introduction and the important part here is this okay your best standard practices so now that you have this extra knowledge you can go back to model one or any of the previous tutorials that we have so, done so far and look at what, what 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 we have done there what we have in those dictionaries and you will see that we're using something like this okay we are always using second order accurate solutions some, some cases we have the tvd later when we go into our numerical background we're going to see how to set up tvds here but this is what we use most of the time okay this is okay this is fine to use so that's all this is a crash introduction hopefully 
you got an idea. I know it's difficult to explain this in in, 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 in one hour, but this is it. Okay, so thank you for your attention and see you in the next videos. Bye.